What's up everyone, Sarah Dietschy rhymes with Peachy here. Instead of the studio, we are here in the home office today because this is where all of the magic happens. I'm talking about video editing, get your mind out of the gutter. Shout out to SoundRaw for sponsoring this video. It's AI generated royalty free music for your videos. All of the music in this video was created with SoundRaw. I don't just make YouTube videos, but I am also a avid consumer. And I'm noticing on my homepage, a lot of people are switching to DaVinci Resolve. And when you have a lot of YouTubers switching to something, a lot of just people in general are gonna try it out. So hey, I thought why not do a follow-up video of switching to Resolve for 30 days from Premiere that I did almost four years ago, because that video was the start of me actually using Resolve as my main NLE. I don't touch Premiere anymore, which is just crazy. My whole life was Premiere. And what's kind of crazy about DaVinci Resolve is you can literally just download it for free. The free version supports a lot of things that the studio version does like editing 4K video and also editing in the cloud. And if you want some of those extra features like temporal and spatial noise reduction, Resolve's neural engine that enables a lot of their AI effects, and more importantly, the support of editing 10-bit video, well then yeah, you can buy the studio version for a one-time fee of $295. So as I've been watching this new wave of Resolve videos the past year, I'm noticing three big reasons why. And those are the same reasons why I switched several years ago. Number one, reliability. Now that I've used Resolve for three or four years, guys, I kid you not, on my PC, Resolve has only crashed twice. Two times. When it's a small number like that, you can actually remember the amount of times that it's crashed. Now, I will say on my MacBook, it crashes way more, but for some reason, I don't know if I'm cursed with Macs and video editing programs, but regardless of Premiere and Resolve, I just have worse luck on Mac than Resolve. But the difference with Resolve, it's always saving like every millisecond, so I never actually lose anything. Resolve does crash way less still than Premiere on Mac, but it's not as drastic of a change, uh, you know, as on PC. Number two, it's just the performance. Resolve is really good at utilizing your GPU, and you just start to notice the performance differences. I don't know, just switching in between the different tabs and color grading. It's just everything is so quick. And number three is the cost, a one-time cost versus a subscription every month. Now, this is something that I never really thought about. I make video as a job. If I have to pay a monthly fee for the tools that I use, whatever, it's fine. I never really cared about that. But for the people starting out, that is a huge deal. So I totally understand. Now, a few things have changed since I made that initial Resolve video. Premiere's performance has improved. And they've actually done a really good job with the new Apple Silicon Max. Premiere actually rips on Apple Silicon Max, but people again are still having issues with stability. And that's something that just kind of always has been a thing. Premiere, even back in the day in 2016, 2017, would use kind of this line. Well, Premiere is our oldest code base. There's only so much we can do. Well, if they started rewriting Premiere from the ground up, like Final Cut did, what was that, seven years ago, then we might have had a really good premiere now. And maybe they wouldn't have lost all these people that they've lost the past year. It's sad, because I, I truly love not only the people at Adobe, I've had the great privilege to you know get to know them, but their products have changed my entire life. I use their products to become a full-time creative. So again, I have a ton of respect for them, but kind of with Premiere, it's kind of like, well, should you rewrite the code? Like what Final Cut did, you know? It was rough for a few years, but now, it's just crushing. Okay, I don't want this video to turn into just me complaining about Premiere. I wanna share over the past four years why I've really fallen in love with Resolve. But like there's a there's a big caution label I wanna put here before you listen to all of those things. If you're happy with a program you're using and you're getting a final result of a video you're proud of and it wasn't frustrating to make and everything is just working, that's great. It kind of makes me nervous when I see some final cut people being like, should I switch to Resolve? Because historically people who've used Final Cut have actually been very happy so if you're a working creative and you're super busy a reason why to switch to a new program and to switch your workflow all around is if you feel 
pain. If you're like, I just can't go on like this, you know? I had nights where I would be up so late editing, re-editing something because something just keeps crashing. And then, you know, my skill is video editing, not technical troubleshooting. And that's what it turned in for me with me and Premiere. And that's why I switched. And still, even then, it took me a long time to do the switch because, you know, I got videos to make. So I struggled with that for a while. So yeah, take all these videos kind of with a grain of salt. If you're happy with what you got, that's fine. Okay, let's get to the actual computer and I'll let you know some of the reasons why I stayed in Resolve and still enjoy it today. Okay, so let's hop into the meat and potatoes, the actual features in Resolve that might get you excited if you just switched or might, you know, make you consider switching. So the first one that I am using all of the time, but it was just released with Resolve 18, was their AI-based voice isolation. It takes audio with a lot of background noise and just makes it close to perfect. So say you're walking on a conference room floor or even in my office, sometimes there's some like whistling from cars outside or maybe even some reverb. This takes care of it. It just isolates your voice and it makes it sound amazing. I am here at Apple Park for the first time since 2019. I am here at Apple Park for the first time since 2019. Now, the only thing with voice isolation, it's one of the few uh, effects in Resolve that really challenges my fancy PC. I can throw a lot of things at my Puget PC and it's good. Voice isolation is a challenge for it. So once you apply it, you have to wait a little bit and it kind of has to like render out and load and then you'll be good. But this is an effect I would recommend adding at the very end of your video because it's going to be pretty brutal color grading and and cutting things up with this still applied, but it does such an amazing job. There's another new audio effect called Dialogue Leveler. Uh, now this will be great for podcasts. It just evens out all of your audio. A lot of these effects are just plug and play, which is good for me because I'm always more concerned about the video and the vibe, but a video without good audio is just not a good video. So this helps me a ton. Something related to this that I would keep an eye on is Adobe Podcast. It's in the beta right now. A video editor just showed me a before and after using this, and it's actually kind of crazy. So AI powered audio recording and editing all on the web. So this looks like uh, Loom, Descript, Riverside, all in one. The before and after of audio after using this is pretty crazy. Okay, number two, it's not necessarily a new feature, but something that I've grown to love more in DaVinci Resolve than Premiere, and that is color grading via a node-based system instead of just using a ton of adjustment layers. Now, this is I, this freaks out a lot of people, like nodes, right? It was very intimidating in the beginning, but I'm just gonna explain it super simple, and I'm sure fancy color graders are gonna get mad at me because I'm not gonna say the right things, but this will just get you started, okay? Think of a serial node as an adjustment layer in Premiere. To add one, you either right click, add node, serial node, or the keyboard shortcut, alt, S. And that's just adding like another adjustment layer that you can do specific color corrections on. Now where this is so cool, if you look at um, this timeline here, you see different titles and videos on top of things, but you don't have all of these extra layers for adjustment layers. Now in Resolve, if you wanted to use a adjustment layer, they call it adjustment clip right here, and you can add it and apply a color grade to here and it'll affect everything below it just like in Premiere. Oh, ripple deleted. But the power of Resolve is using groups and color grading via nodes because it keeps all of the color grading in this color tab and it actually really simplifies your timeline because you don't have all the adjustment clips. So my workflow on basically what I do for color grading is say I have a roll. So this is my long A roll clip, right? I'll just like, drag it down, ignore all of the audio. And before I go into this clip and start hacking away and editing, right? I make sure to put this one A-roll clip into a group. So I have it selected, I go into my color tab. This is the uh, one A-roll clip. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say add into a new group. We'll just say A-roll two because I already have an A-roll. So every clip that I put into that A-roll two clip is gonna have the same exact A-roll color grading. So instead of having to go in and manually drag that adjustment layer over all of your A-roll, you're just gonna assign it to a group. And we're doing it before because as you start cutting away at these clips, every single one of these clips is still gonna maintain that group, if that makes sense. So now we have these three A-roll clips, and instead of me having to go and individually grade each of those clips, I'm just gonna click one of them, I'm gonna go into group post clip, and now 
now when I add a serial node here and say I want to brighten it up a bit, as you can see, all three of those clips that are in that same group had the same color grade applied to them. This is just such a faster way to color grade and easier. And then say with this one A-roll clip, I wanna do something different with it that's not gonna affect the other A-roll two clips. I'm just gonna go and change from group post clip to clip. And this is just gonna change um, this individual clip. So as you can see, that is now darker than all of the A-roll clips, but it still has the post clip color grade. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. If you're curious how I actually um, color grade my videos, we'll just go to a A-roll clip. Here we go, and I'll go to the color tab. And if we go to groups, you can see it's in my A-roll group. Um, I will take the color grade off, that's before, and then that's after. I definitely try to go for a look it's what I like. Some people might not like the kind of contrasty saturation look, but that's what I like. So if I go to the group post clip, you're gonna see I have a Film Convert plugin. This is Film Convert Nitrate. And I actually don't use the FX6 camera profile. Um, I kind of took the time to go through the different profiles and I really like how the Sony A7 Mark three Cine 4 uh, whatever profile looks on S Cinetone FX6 footage. And I usually use one of the three first film stocks and then I go in and tweak things. And usually I have to raise the shadows a bit. And sometimes my office footage looks pretty orange. I can usually save that just by adjusting the mids and bringing it a little bit more to the blues. Um, but this one was fine, so I didn't um, do anything to that. So hopefully that makes sense. A lot of people who are coming over from Lumetri color panel in Premiere are kind of intimidated by this page, but the basics, if you want to raise the exposure and you're not using a plugin like Film Convert where you can just press the exposure um, dial and get more exposure, how you increase exposure in Resolve is using the shadows and the highlights. There's not one exposure dial like in Lumetri. And Lift Gamma Gain, you can kind of view that as just adjusting the colors of the shadows, the mids, and the highs. And then everything else is pretty self-explanatory. I don't know why I said that. It won't be self-explanatory, but there's a lot of great tutorials that go more into coloring and resolve that you can probably watch. Hopefully that gets you a good start. Okay, number three, we're going back to like a new cool AI feature. And this is something I actually mentioned in my AI video, but Magic Mask. Magic Mask is so cool. Uh, it basically allows you to very roughly outline a subject in Resolve and it just automatically makes you a mask. Then you can track it and then create a new node that color grades specifically that object or maybe the background and boom, off to the races and you didn't have to manually cut things out. There's also something called Automatic Depth Map. Now that is similar to Magic Mouse Magic Mouse. It's similar to Magic Mask, but you don't have to sit there and wait for it to track. It basically automatically separates the foreground from the background and allows you to do a really quick color grade to the foreground or the background. So you can do stuff like the example I gave you for Magic Mask where you put text behind a person or you can use it for a quick color grade, uh, you know, a landscape shot where you only wanna color grade the sky and not the mountains or whatever's in the foreground. Number four, I know I'm kind of switching in between new features and just things that I like about Resolve instead of Premiere, um, but this is something that I just really like. The timeline is fast. Going in between clips and just scrolling and you know zooming in and out, taking the playhead and just going back and forth in footage, uh, it's very similar, like the fluidity to it is very similar to Final Cut in that it is just fast. Whenever I go back in Premiere, it almost feels like kind of archaic and clunky, but that's where the similarities to Final Cut stops. If you're coming from Final Cut to Resolve, it's gonna feel very, very different. It's very similar to when I tried to edit in Final Cut, I just gave up. I was like, this is so different from what I'm used to. I just can't do this. But coming from Premiere, Resolve was actually very familiar, like applying effects and just like dealing with timelines and dealing with media. And uh, I don't know, it was just pretty easy for me to learn. So if you're coming from Premiere, uh, give it a solid month and you'll be, you'll be golden. Number five, Resolve rolls out a ton of updates all of the time and they they never break the program. Uh, that is something I don't miss with Premiere because the updates are almost like forced upon you and more times than not, they would just add more bugs. And when Resolve adds things, they're not changing the fundamentals of the program. I went into Premiere recently and the new import and export page is so jarring. It adds so many more clicks to the process. It just, it's 
bad. Next up, a short segue here. When you're a video editor, you spend a lot of time searching for the perfect royalty-free music. Well, now you can save that time searching for the perfect royalty-free music, and now you can actually create it. With a little help from actually what we've been talking about today, AI. Shout out to SoundRaw for sponsoring this video. Seriously, you want to see how this works. SoundRaw is a royalty-free AI music generator for creators. With SoundRaw, you can select the video theme like a vlog or corporate video or even gaming, select the moon genre and length, then you can even choose the tempo and the instruments you want in the song, and boom. You can get as detailed as you want, or if the song is already good, then you can just download it. If you're more experienced in composition, they do have a pro mode as as well. You can even change the intensity of certain parts of the song by selecting it. You can say, hey, I want that instrument during this part, but not over here. And you can see on the screen now, this is me kind of rearranging the song that you're listening to right now for this ad segment. It's actually super easy to use, and this is kind of blowing my mind. This is super, super cool. A lot of video editors will tell you how much time it takes looking for the right song. And for whatever reason, it's still difficult to find music to match the mood you're looking for. But SoundRaw is built for you, for the creator. So if you want to create high quality, royalty-free music, you can check out SoundRaw. Seriously, you won't regret it. It is, it is just so, so cool. Thank you so much, SoundRaw, for sponsoring this video. You can check out my link in the description below if you want to check it out. Woo, okay, cool. SoundRaw, thank you for sponsoring this video. I have a few more points, if that's okay. Uh, if you're considering uh, switching to Resolve, these are, some, these are some pros. They have a full-on iPad app. So I actually made a full video about this when it was in beta. You can check it out here. I never remember what side. Uh, but what's kind of crazy is they ported over desktop resolve to the iPad. So it works really, really good. Now they only started with the cut page and the color page, which the cut page is different than the full on edit page. But people have now figured out how to get all of the pages. They basically just go to the keyboard shortcuts and say, hey, show this page. And the app works like the full desktop app now works on the iPad. I don't know if Blackmagic is going to shut this down, but it's kind of crazy. If you want to learn how to edit in the cut page, I did a little tutorial section in that iPad video that I did. So again, I will link it down in the description below. Another feature that might be worth it for you is cloud video editing. Now this is not something that I use, but this is something that Premiere charges more for, for their version, but it's just included in Resolve. So this allows you to collaborate live with another editor from wherever they are in the world. It'll automatically lock whatever timeline one editor is in um, so the other editor doesn't mess it up and they can, you know, be in another timeline. Now, whenever I work with a remote editor, hey, what's up, Kyle? Uh, we have our own workflow in Google Drive where it just kind of syncs the footage and we export a Resolve project file every time that we're done with our version so we can pass it off in between each other. That works out well for me. And yeah, it's super simple. Anyways, yeah, I don't think I have more to say about that one. Okay, and the last point I would like to make is keyboard shortcuts always makes you edit faster no matter what program that you're in. Previously, I've made a dedicated video to this for Resolve and Premiere, so I'm actually going to release with this video a version three of the Peachy Shortcuts for free. I'll just put the Google Drive link in the description below. And what this does is basically add all of the keyboard shortcuts that you need to the left side of the keyboard. So that allows you to keep your hand on the mouse, the right hand on your mouse the entire time and have all that you need on the left side of your keyboard. It works really well for me and I've added some shortcuts if you've seen that previous video. I'll put all that info that you need in the description below. So one of the questions that people had on Twitter was, hey, what is something in Premiere that Resolve might not have that you still like better in Premiere? I will answer that because there are a few things. So number one, auto-generated subtitles. This is something that Resolve doesn't have. They recently updated their subtitle workflow and and it definitely is better, but Premiere, you click a button and it actually auto-generates the subtitles. You don't have to use a third-party service. That is huge. I would love for Resolve to get on that. So a lot of those uh, kind of AI features that Premiere has had have been updated over in Resolve, like basically, uh, what's it called? The smart reframe. So it'll uh, reframe your 16 by nine footage to nine by 16. It'll keep your subject in the center. So I'm glad to see that, but oof, we need, we need the auto-generated subtitles. 
subtitles. Another thing that I do miss is Premiere's graphics panels, just dealing with text. I don't know what it is, but I enjoy so much more dealing with text in Premiere. It almost feels like you're in Photoshop. It's just easier. I like the different drop shadow settings that you have in Premiere. Another thing, if you're using two displays instead of one, ah, yeah, there's much more flexibility with Premiere than in Resolve. It has this setting where you can say, hey, I'm using two displays, but it's not infinitely adjustable. In Premiere, you can grab your effects window, your timeline window, you can bring it wherever you want. So I have to say, like, panel flexibility is really handy when you're editing vertical video. Premiere's graphic panel and also the automatic captions, I feel like is also a winner for vertical video and social media content. So if you're creating for things like TikTok, IG Reels, YouTube Shorts, where all of those things are necessary, I still think actually Premiere is the better program for you. But I mostly create long form for YouTube, what you're watching now. Hey, hi, how are you? So it's really not a problem for me. But there you go. Premiere is still really good for some things. And again, if you have no issues, stay stay in there. So hey, let me know down in the comments below, why do you use Premiere or Resolve or Final Cut? Bottom line for me is yes, I do enjoy all these new features in Resolve and it's turned out to be a great program, but I need stability. I make videos every single week. It is not only my job, but it's been my life for over a decade. So just having a program that doesn't crash on me and it's just stable, is is it that's that's what i need that's why i've been in resolve for now almost four years which is crazy and it's been a great experience both on pc and mac that's why i could never use final cut because a lot of my workflow is on windows you know if you just switch to resolve and you're using mac i'm gonna leave a tip at the end of this video to make sure you get the correct color in the exports that i kind of buried in my last macbook video uh, but hey guys if you appreciated this video check out that sound raw link in the description below just just to check it out. It's actually pretty cool. And you can leave a like, hit that subscribe button, totally free things to support this video and send it out into the algorithm. And let me know if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button down below for new videos every single week. And until next time, guys, stay peachy. Okay, bye. And hey, if you are a video editor and you're on a Mac and maybe you're switching to Resolve or you just have switched to Resolve, I have a tip for you. I'm seeing this on Twitter a ton because I had the same issue as well. If you're having issues with editing your footage and liking the color in Resolve, but then hitting export and it not matching up when you upload it to YouTube or maybe you watch it in QuickTime, do these two things in Resolve to solve your problem. Number one, go to project settings, color management, timeline color space, and select rec 709-A and then go to your preferences general and make sure this is checked the use Mac display color profiles for viewers and that's going to ensure that the video that you export is actually going to look like uh, what you've edited in Resolve.